Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. We have come to bless the Lord. We have come to say thank you, Lord. We have come to praise God for all his many blessings. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're grateful and thankful to our God. If it wasn't for his grace and mercy, we would not be here today. So thank you, Lord. We invite your presence in this virtual worship experience because that's what we come to do. We come to worship. We come to worship. We come to worship God in spirit and in truth. Let us worship our God. He's worthy, yes. worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. We will praise God from whom all the blessings are flowing. The doxology. Let's praise him. Let's praise our God. Let's praise him. Praise yes, Lord. God praise from who? Yes, Lord. All blessings flow. Yes, let's praise him. Let's praise, praise him. Praise him, yes. him all creatures. All in our God from whom all our blessings are flowing. We will have an open selection at this time by Brother Justin Williams. Amen. 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 And hallelujah is the highest praise. Yes, Lord. Because every praise, every praise, every victory, every healing, it's unto our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship and what I call. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with what I call. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every world of worship with what I call. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. To our God, glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise. To our God, God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, God, my Savior, God. 
tears. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Let the saints of God say hallelujah. Every praise, not some praises, but every praises should be unto our God. For God certainly, Jesus is our Savior and our Deliverer. And God knows we need delivering because there are so many things that we are faced with. In this season of life, let us pray. Oh God, as I lift up my voice unto thee, God, you know me by name, by character, and by spirit. So today, oh God, as I lift up my voice unto you, God, I cry out, have mercy. Have mercy, oh God, upon this world that we live in and have mercy, oh God, upon your people, Lord. God, have mercy because we're facing some times and some situations, oh God, like never before. But, oh God, as I lift up my voice this morning, I lift up my voice to a God who created a world. And you created, oh God, for your glory and for your honor. But many times, oh God, we take your glory, we, we, we take your honor, and we receive it. We receive it, oh God. We take it for granted. But God... As I call upon your name, God, I know that you're able to restore and to replenish and to renew, oh God, that which has been broken, that which has been torn down. God, you are God of creation and restoration. So as I come today, oh God, I I just want to thank you for being God because, God, you're loving in the midst of hatred. You are God of justice in the midst of injustice. You are God of kindness in the midst of rudeness. And what I love about you, God, you change it not. So, God, I thank you, Lord, that not only do you not change, but you are able to remake and restore and to renew and to replenish. Have mercy, Lord. For the world is going through a pandemic like never before. And now, oh God, the numbers are rising again. But, oh God, I just believe, oh God, that you're going to get glory. You're going to get on and you're going to get praise out of this. Because, oh God, you are omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent in all of thy ways. So now, Lord, as the listeners who are out there listening this morning, I pray, oh God, that you will give them strength, give them courage, give them renewal, give them hope, Lord, that tomorrow won't be like today. That tomorrow, God, will be better than today. But right now, this is the day that you have given us, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Because, God, we know that not only did you give it to us, but you're still with us. So, God, hold our hands. Guide our feet. God, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. And, God, I love you because you are God of forgiveness. God, we all need your forgiveness and need your mercy, need your grace. 
God, give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. God, the world is in need of you. God, I'm in need of you. People are in need of you like never before, Lord. And God, what we are faced with, only you can fix it. So God, heal the land. Heal the land. Heal the land. And we will give you honor. And we give you glory. And give you praise. For there is no God like our God. And we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. It is in the name of Jesus that I pray. And let every heart say amen. 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 A scripture is found in 2 Timothy, the third chapter. And we commence reading at the first verse. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Convetious. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverts lusts. Ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Jannes and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further for their folly shall be manifested unto all men as theirs also was. The word of God for the people of God and the church say it. Amen. Filled with swift transition <clears throat> Now on earth unmoved can stand Heal your hopes on things eternal Oh, to God's Changing hand, you ought to trust in Him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring, if thy earthly friends forsake. Thank you still more closely to him cling when everybody ought to 
hold to his hand God's unchanging hand Oh, hold to his hand God's unchanging hand Be your hopes on things eternal to God's unchanging hand Oh, children, you are the home to his hand God's unchanging hand Hold to his hand God's unchanging hand Hopes on things eternal. Oh, to God's unchanging children, you ought to trust in Him who will not leave you. Remember what soever years may bring. Oh, if thy earthly friends forsake, forsake us, still more closely to him can. Oh, everybody ought to hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Oh, to his hand, God's unchanging hand, be your hopes on things eternal. Everybody on the whole, to God's unchanging hand. We greet you today in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's just good to be here. Mm -hmm. God has been good to us. He's favored us and has spared our lives. And we're just grateful to be here. One more worship experience. We do thank God for the center angel of this house, Pastor Clifton Riley, Reverend Sonia Riley, and to all the Bethlehemites and to those who are listening through virtual worship and to musician brother Justin Williams and to all of you our father's children I know we often say it and it sounds redundant but I'm extremely grateful to be alive and able to stand behind the sacred desk one more time yes, yes. nobody knows but God and me and, and maybe a few others how good he's been to me spared my life I could have died in the midst of time but he allowed time to pause to give me some time to think and spared me in spite of me and for all of that I am extremely grateful I'm grateful for your prayers I'm grateful for, for your concerns and I just know it's nothing but the grace of God that I'm here and he still has a purpose for my life let us pray Lord we thank you for another opportunity that we can stand behind the sacred desk and declare what your spirit says unto your church. We realize that we're in some strange times. But Lord, if ever a time we needed you, we need you right now. Thank you for how good you've been to us. Thank you for how good you've been to me. Thank you for in spite of me, you have spared me. And for whatever purpose you have for my future and all of our futures, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. We pray now that you would bless your word, that it would not return unto you void, but that it would have touched somebody's heart, able them to become convicted, realize that they need you as their savior. 
let this word be relevant and helpful in time like these but most of all we lift you up that you'll draw all men unto you we thank you now we ask for your anointing in Jesus name amen again we are grateful to be here one more time and don't take it for granted that this could be our last time but we are grateful for whatever the Lord has done, is doing, and will do. Our scripture text today from our sermonic message will come from 2 Timothy chapter 3 and has already been read and so we're not going to ask you to uh, read it again but we're asking that in your meditation that you would go back and and look at it and that you will peruse what the Lord is saying to his church. Really, our sermon text today deals with 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 17, really covers uh, the entire message. Uh, but the message that we're going to key on in on today would be verses 1 through 9 of 2 Timothy chapter 3. But in your meditation, we ask that you would go back and read verses 1 through 17 would cover our whole pericope of our text uh, for today. Our subject today, we want to talk with the help of the Holy Spirit from the subject, how to recognize the times we're living in. Mm -hmm. How to recognize the times that we are living in. Uh, let that meditate in your minds and hearts for just a few moments because so often we take life for granted and we feel as if though uh, we are living in some childhood times or some cartoon times in which things are just good and glamorous and nothing is to be taken seriously. Uh, before this virus became uh, prevalent, Everybody was going on about their business, doing what they do best, eating and shopping and living and working and churching and spending money and living as if though tomorrow would never come. Yeah. And how many know that God sits high and he looks low yeah. and he has a way of getting all of our attention and so he sent this virus not to punish us not to pick on us not to uh, put us down not to uh, crumble us into the earth like ash but he sent this virus so that we could wake up and realize that his word is true and is fulfilling itself we don't believe that the Bible is true sometimes we quote scriptures and we we say all of these things and we feel as if though these things that uh, the Lord has promised in his word is only going to take place in uh, months and days and weeks and years from now. But how many know that God has fixed it where we can wake up and see that his word is fulfilling itself right now. Yeah, yeah. And so we must wake up and realize how to recognize uh, the times we're living in. You may say, well, preacher, I don't see uh, what times we're living in. Well, I hate to bust your bubble. I hate to stir in your Kool-Aid, but therefore we're in some horrible times. Uh, we're in times with stuff like uh, what happened to George Floyd. We're in times where young black men are being shot for no reason and they they are referring it to gang related activity we're in times where teenagers which should be perusing their future for college or their future for military or their future for life they they are busy slinging and cracking and selling weed and wasting their life and living by the sword and dying by the sword 
We're living in times where racism is reoccurring and uh, the 1950s and 60s is now coming back to life and where some of us said that we only knew about civil rights and Jim Crow days because we only read it in a history book. Now we're living it in 2020 because now if we drive at night, especially as a black man and you have a decent car and don't have a little tent on your windows, uh, you are in danger because uh, uh, you are in, in danger of the police officer stopping you for no reason and, and challenging you and threatening your life and may even put their foot on your neck and tase you if you only move a fingertip. And so we, we're in dangerous times. We're in times now where it's almost dangerous to go to Publix or Walmart or go to the store because you have people with signs on their trucks and cars that say that I am a proud Trump supporter. We are in time now where protesters are taking over the community. We are in times where churches are closed and people have become content and said, uh, why should I go back to the church? I don't see where the church is helping me in it. We are in some terrible times. And if we don't wake up and realize the times we're living in, we are going to be in for a rude awakening. Every Christian believer ought to uh, recognize the times that we are living in. Yeah. When we look at this text today from 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, we find that the apostle Paul uh, was laying in a prison cell. He had been beat. He had been shipwrecked, he had been tortured, he had been misunderstood, he had been lied on, he had been uh, criticized and ostracized, but now they had locked him up for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's on Nero's chopping block, he's waiting for the death penalty, and while he's waiting there, uh, many would feel like like us, that he would be worried about his future and that he would be waddling and whining about his prison condition. But Paul was not worried about his prison condition. Paul said, while I'm waiting on death row, I'm going to encourage my son Timothy in the ministry because I want you, young Timothy, a young pastor that I left at Ephesus to recognize that you are in some perilous times. I want you to recognize what times you're living in. I want you to recognize what kind of people you're dealing with. But Paul, when he was talking to his young son Timothy in the ministry, he was not talking in present tense, but the Holy Spirit had revealed to him what was going to happen in future tense. He was talking about the future tense of the church. He was talking about the future tense of life. He was talking about the future tense of the gospel of Jesus Christ and what we would have to contend with and fight with uh, before Jesus returns. And so therefore he encourages Timothy. He tells Timothy, I want you to understand this, that in the last days you shall have perilous times. Now, that word perilous in the classical Greek uh, means difficult. That word perilous in the classical Greek uh, was referred to wild animals and the danger of being around wild animals and the danger of, of the raging sea because in Paul's day and in that day and around Ephesus of uh, the Christians had major persecution that was breaking out upon the church because they were feeding Christians. They were feeding leaders to wild animals. They were taking them and dropping them off in a calcinium, which was a place where there was wild lions. And when they would drop you in the middle of the calcinium, the wild lions would rip you to pieces. And that's what was happening upon the church. And so this word Perilous was used here in Timothy to refer to them and it was also to, used to refer to the raging sea because they also would drop some in the raging sea to drown for their life. And perilous, the word perilous is not used anymore but in the, in the days of Jesus, in the Messiah days and it was used around the Gadarenes when it was talking about when the uh, 2,000 pigs jumped off of the mountain. So perilous referred to dangerous times. Yeah. 
And yeah. so Paul, Paul, Paul here says that, that we are going to face some dangerous, some difficult, some terrible times. And I hate to say it, brothers and sisters, but those times are now. Yeah. They are not going to be on tomorrow, but they are right now. And so we must wake up and recognize the times that we are living in. You may say, well, preacher, how can I recognize the times that we're living in? Uh, I, I have a little money. I receive my stimulus. I'm getting more stamps now than I've ever received. I'm eating good. I'm, I'm working from home. I, I, I don't quite understand uh, that we're in perilous times. How do I recognize these troubling, these terrible, these awful times that we're living in? Well, I'm glad you asked. There are several things that the Lord has showed me from the text that I want to point out to you in order to recognize these uh, perilous times that we're living in. First of all, Paul reminds his son Timothy and us that our minds must be transformed. Yeah. Our minds must be transform he said i want you to understand this he, he had been talking to timothy uh, in first timothy and he said so much and had so much else to say to him about the future of the church and about the future of the gospel of jesus christ that paul couldn't stop in first timothy he had to write a continuation of the letter and write second timothy and so he had talked to him in chapter one talked to him in chapter two and now he's continuing with him in chapter three because we see in chapter four that paul is getting ready to die and in chapter 4 is a scripture that we find and we read at so many funerals when he said, for I am now ready to be offered, for I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith and now laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And not only to me, but to all them that love his appearing. So Paul says that, that in order to recognize these uh, perilous, these troubled, these difficult times, our minds must be transformed. You may say, well, how, 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 how does my mind get transformed? Paul says that our mind it must be transformed by the word of God. Yeah, yeah. So often, so often we, we, we let dust collect on our Bibles and we have not read them and don't read them and we make excuses and say we don't have time to read them. But God has put us in an isolated state in our lives that now we ought to be reading the word and living the word and sucking the word and eating the word. He told, he told, a matter of fact, he told Ezekiel, eat the book. Matter of fact, we ought to be eating the book more now than we ever ate it so that our minds can be transform if you don't you want to recognize how to be transformed he says it in romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice before uh, god our maker and then he says be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind the problem with a lot of us as Christians is, is that reason why our hearts can't get right because our minds cannot get right. How many know everything starts with the mind? God works on our mind. Matter of fact, that's why uh, Romans says in chapter 10 that, that, that faith comes by hearing. Verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And once we hear the word of God, the word of God gets on our mind through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit then pricks our heart. And then we must make a decision, must I yield my life to Christ? So our minds must be transformed. That's why in this season of this coronavirus, in this season of troubled times, in this season of racism, in this season of injustice, in this season that we're going through with having no jobs and, and, and being denied from unemployment and people are struggling and people are hurting and people are discombobulated. They don't know what to do. They don't know which way to go. That's why it's not a time to fill your mind with junk. That's why it's not a time to fill your mind with gossip that's why it's not a time to hang around negative folk you need to keep your mind on Christ because Isaiah 26 and 3 said he that keepeth his mind stayed on thee shall be kept in perfect peace yeah, yeah. so your mind must be transformed yeah. your 
mind must be focused on Christ. Yeah. I know we're not perfect robots. I know we're not angelic or robotic beings, but therefore our minds ought to stay on the word. We ought to stay on the goodness of Jesus. We ought to stay on how far he's brought us and what he's done in our life because if we're going to make it any further through these troubled times, it starts with the mind. Yeah, yeah. So often people's minds are isolated and they're idle. And I heard the elders say that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Because when your mind is out on and you have time on hand, Peter said you become a busybody. Yeah. You meddle in other men's affairs. Yeah. Uh, Paul said that right here in, the, in his later description of how these human beings are going to act. He said these people will become lovers of themselves. Yeah. They, 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 were, they were caused silly and weak women to be laden with sin. They would, they would pull them out of houses. They, they would run from place to place talking nonsense and being tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Yeah. If your mind is not focused, if your mind is not transformed, the devil would have a field day with your mind. And I want to say this before I move on, brothers and sisters. If the devil ever get our mind, right. yeah. he can definitely get our hearts. Amen. And if he get our hearts, he got our souls. And so therefore, that's the problem with the body of Christ. Even before the virus came out, the devil has been working and playing a field day on a lot of folk minds. So now he has got, already had the mind. So now he's working on the heart. And therefore, that's why it's crucial time that the word of God be preached and taught unadulterated because Satan is trying to win as many as he can because he don't want to go to the lake of fire by himself. Second thing I want to point out to you in order how to recognize the times we're living in, not only must our minds be transformed, but then secondly, our mandates must be based on the truth. Yeah. Our mandates must be based on the truth. Paul says to Timothy here that there was many, there will be many who seek after godliness but denying the power thereof, yeah. never coming to the truth. And how many know Jesus said the truth shall not just make you free, but the truth shall set you free. And so therefore, therefore, many, many don't want to hear the truth. Many, many times we ask people's opinion and we say, uh, tell me the truth. But deep down inside, we don't want to hear the truth. Yeah. Because how many know the truth hurts? The truth will make you say out sometime. The truth will make you wiggle sometime. The truth will make you uncomfortable sometime. But Paul said, our mandate, our foundation got to be based on the truth. How do I stand on the truth, preacher? We stand on the truth by knowing the word. The word is the truth. The word is the solid foundation. And that's why, that's why it's important even when times are good uh, before it starts raining in your life to know the word. Because when Satan comes against you, you can't fight the devil with cussing. You can't fight the devil with tricks and schemes. You can't fight the devil with tradition and opinion. You can't fight the devil with your buddy system and your clique. But therefore, we fight him with the word. If you notice, amen, in Matthew chapter 4, when, when the devil tempted Jesus out there in the wilderness, Jesus didn't say, oh, I'm the son of God. He didn't brag about his position, but he put the word on him. He said, as it is written, yeah. thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Wow. And so therefore we must know the word. Yeah. Yeah. Many times Satan uh, beats down Christians yeah. because we don't know the word. Yeah. He takes our attacks us and rips us apart spiritually piece by piece yeah. because we don't know the word. And don't get me wrong, you don't have to wear a t-shirt, you don't have to wear the biggest cross, you don't have to have the biggest Bible, you don't have to walk around in the grocery store quoting scriptures like you're so more holier than thou, but therefore you ought to have the word down in your bosom, you ought to have the word down in your spirit, man. You ought to eat that word, you ought to love that word, you ought to sip that word, you ought to sleep on that word, because I don't get it twisted. Like Paul said to Timothy, perilous times will come, Satan will come, there will be 
be some rain in your life. And when Satan comes against you, you're going to need the word. You're not going to have time to run to the church and grab it. You're not going to have time to call the preacher. You're not going to have time to call the deacon or the steward. You're not going to have time to call the elder or the bishop. But you're going to have to know the word for yourself and be able to tell the devil flat-footed, Thou shalt not tip me. Get behind me, Satan. You got to know the word. He said that our mandate, our foundation, our, our tactics for fighting the devil got to be based on the truth. You can't base it on lies. You can't base it on he say and she say. You, you can't base it on, on the latest gossip. You got to base your foundation for fighting the devil on the word. That's why, that's why Ephesians chapter 6, Paul declares and said, Brethren, I, behold, I tell you, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. It says around verse 10, put on the whole armor of God. He talks about the helmet of salvation. He talks about the sword of the spirit. But he said, let your loins be girded with truth. He said, let your feet be girded and, and tied up uh, with the gospel of peace. And so, therefore, he gives a description of the armor that we ought to put on. And he said, you can't just put this on at Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter, but you got to put it on every day. You got to put it on every hour. You can't just put it on, uh, put your Sunday best on when it's time to come to church and it's time to wear your big hat so you can shout. You know, it's time to see who's going to outdo each other in the corsages and boot nails. But it, he said, you got to have this armor on every day. He said, you got to be girded with the truth. Got to stand on the promises of God that cannot fail. Third thing I want to point out to you, how to recognize the time we're living in. Not only must our minds be transformed, not only must our mandate be based on the truth, but then thirdly, our focus must be on our relationship with Christ. Our focus must be on our relationship with Christ. He says here, he talks continuously to Timothy, and he says to him, let your focus, he said, you got all this stuff going on around you got all this persecution. You got all this heresy, all this false teaching going on, all, all these apost apostrophes and all these counterfeits, he said, that's creeping into the church and will creep into the church. He was talking in present tense what was going on in that day, but he was also talking about future tense. God had given him a glimpse of today's time, what's going on right now. Yeah. He said, but Timothy, don't focus on the negatives that's going on around you. Yeah, yeah. Keep your mind yeah. on your relationship with Christ. He said, Timothy, you're young. You're young in the ministry. There are folk in the Ephesus church. And you find it if you read back chapter 2 and 1 and go back to 1 Timothy, you find that, 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 that Timothy had problems because there were many in the church who did not respect him because of age. Yeah. And Paul had to encourage him and tell him, uh, let no man despise you because of your youth. Yeah. That, that, there were many who felt like Timothy was just uh, uh, right off the street. He, he was new to the faith and therefore he didn't know what he was talking about. But Paul said, uh, the hands of the presbyter has been laid on you. He said, and don't neglect the gift that's down in you. Yeah. You got gifts in you, Timothy, that you don't even know you got. Yeah. He said, they just need to be stirred up. He said, and don't worry about what they say about you and what they think about you. He said, because I've set a prime example before you. Yeah. You've yeah. seen my example of love and conduct. If you read further on in chapter 3, on through uh, chapter verse 17, you'll find that Paul said that I've, I've lived before you. I've tried to set the example before you. I've tried to do what's right before you. So you have seen an example of what it's like to live godly yeah. in the midst of persecution. He said, follow my example. But he said, most of all, follow the example of Christ. Yeah, yeah. All of us, all of us have been blessed in some way with godly fathers and mothers and people in our life 
who have tried to walk upright before us and the Lord may have not been biological but God sent spiritual mothers and spiritual fathers in all of our life could be pastors could be elders could be deacons could be steward could be a labor could just be a pew member a bench warmer but therefore we can see the God in them God sends them in our life for a reason and when he sends them in our life, he sends them because he wants us to see an example of Christ in a human vessel of flesh in the midst of persecution. Yeah. Paul said, don't worry about the negatives. Don't focus on what's going on. Just focus on your relationship with Jesus. Yeah. He said, make sure that you live godly. He said, and if you live godly, don't worry. Don't be, be, don't be alarmed. You're going to be, you're going to suffer persecution. He said, but God will take care of you because he took care of me. That's the encouragement to us in this time, brothers and sisters, not to get angry, not, not to be protesters and get bitter, not to, not to turn against God, not to turn against the church. It's not for us in this season to, to, to be bashing and talking about Trump every day because talking about it is not going to help any because my Bible tells me in Romans around chapter 13 that the powers that be are ordained of God, so it must be some reason or some purpose that's in the plan of God that he have allowed Donald Trump to be our president but therefore I just believe that God's word is fulfilling itself that every knee shall bow and every tongue going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. People were rich, people was bougie, people were driving nice cars and living in nice homes and had nice bank accounts and wearing tailor-made suits. They thought they had it going on and it was bragging and boasting and looking down on other folk. But how many know when God gets through with us, all of us going to be back on our knees singing that old hymn of the church saying, I need thee every hour. God want us to focus on our relationship with him. He want us to draw closer. Yeah. He want us to realize we need him. Yeah. And God is also teaching us in this season. Yeah. We don't know who we might need. Yeah. God works through people. He works through flies. He works through elements. He works through animals. God can use whoever and whatever he wants to yeah. to get his will accomplished. As I close here today, it's not about to tell you if you hadn't recognized it. You need to wake up and recognize the times that we are living in. We're living in some troubled and perilous times. I heard Paul saying to Timothy, he said, I, I'm on my way uh, to meet the Lord. He said, but I want to tell you that I, I want to encourage you before I leave this world that uh, the church is still in good hands. I stumbled by somebody to tell you, don't be alarmed uh, because of what we're going through. Uh, just know uh, that God is still on the throne. I wish I had a witness here that can say well what shall we do uh, in time like these I heard Paul saying to Timothy he said you got to have your mind renewed is there anybody renewing their mind yes Lord when I think about renewal I think about insurance policies because if you drive a vehicle uh, every six months or once a year you got to renew your policy and that's what God is saying in his word when you read the word when you love the word when you sip on the word when you eat on the word he said it renews your mind ain't God alright he said but then our mandate must be on the truth you can't stand on a lie and expect all the truth to pop up you got to know the truth for yourself because how many know the truth will set you and make you free but then thirdly and finally
finally as I close he said you got to focus on your relationship with Christ ain't God alright that's why I love the hymn writer who said my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy lean on Jesus name you may say well why preacher are you going to lean on the name of Jesus I'm going to lean on his name because he never let me fail I'm going to lean on his name because he'll pick you up when you're down I'm gonna lean on his name because he's a healer in a sick room he's a lawyer in a courtroom he's water when you're thirsty he's bread when you're hungry he died out on Calvary I feel my help now he died until the sun refused to shine he died until my sins was washed whiter than snow he died until my name was sketched in eternity they buried him but early I said early Sunday morning he got up and he coming back ain't it all right recognize the times we're living in stay focused because he's been good stay focused because he's been our keeper stay focused because he's still the lily of the valley stay focused because he snatched us from the jaws of death and hell and he wants us to recognize the times we're living in because he's coming back. And he's not coming back for folk who are shucking and jiving. He's not coming back for folk who are bragging on how big their bank accounts is, how big their churches are, how big their Cadillacs and Mercedes are. But he's coming back for folk who realize that it's getting late in the evening. Time is winding up. And it's time for all of us, preachers and deacons and mothers and bishops and potentates and presidents and senators and mayors and city councilmen and police officers and lay members and bench warmers and those who don't even go to church. It's time for everybody to get their house in order because he's coming back. I want to say this before I invite the invitation to you. Life we sometimes take for granted. And we feel like we're on the top of the mountain. But the Lord has a way of shaking us. Yeah, yeah. He has sent some things in our life to shake you. Yeah. And cause you to see a different perspective. Yeah. And in my days of sickness, God allowed me to look at mortality. A little more differently than I looked at. I work at a funeral home and, and, and I... I enjoy ministering to other folk and I've preached many eulogies and I've, I, I, I've done uh, furalistic work but therefore it's a different story when you see yourself heading that way. In a few days I could have been at the funeral home in a few days my family could have been planning a home going for me. But God spared my life and he taught me some valuable lessons why I laid nine days in a hospital on a bed of affliction. God showed me that I need it and that none of this stuff matters that we bicker and fight over. And God also showed me we don't know who we might need and who he might use to get his will accomplished. He used some folk in the nine days I laid on that bed that I thought would never come my way. I said, I hope I never end up in their hand. God has a way of shaking us, brothers and sisters. So stop taking life for granted. And I want to say that you don't have to be old. You don't have to be in a nursing home. You don't have to be gray-headed for him to shake you. 33 and God shook me. When I thought my whole life was ahead of me, God put a pin in time. 
to show me that he's still in charge. And I want to just say to you, it's time for all of us to get our house in order. We don't like to talk about funerals. We don't like to talk about death. We don't like to talk about wills and insurance policy. But that's fine. You need to get that in order. But mainly make sure that you get your business in order with the Lord. Get your business in order spiritually and financially. We extend an invitation to you. Yeah. Maybe a man, woman, boy, girl may think that you got it together and your days could be so limited. You could be on your way to the funeral home or the cemetery and not even know it. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother, oh, my sister, won't you come? Will there be one? We offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother, might not get another we chance. Offer Christ to you, oh, my sister, he will give you brand new life, new life abundantly. Just come, just come. Oh, come. Why you got time? Come. Come on. May not get tomorrow. All you to got is right cry. now. Confess and say, Lord, save me. That's all you oh, got to do. Believe. Oh, come. Come on. Don't have a church on Bethel. Pastor Riley would love to have you. Oh, you would mainly get your name in the Lamb come. Book of Life. Come. Come on to Christ. God bless you. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. What a word from on high that God gave to us this day through the human clay vessel, Brother Gary Bryant. What a word. I want to thank you, Brother Bryant, for letting the Lord use you. I don't know who out there I'm talking to, but I know I'm talking to myself. The word of God, how to recognize the times we're living in. And one of the things that, in the message that it really, really brought home is that, and what it really matters to all of us as Christians and those of us who are not Christians, is that to have a relationship with God. And to have that relationship to God is how we relate to God. How God relates to us will never change. And how we relate to God and how God relates to us, it will transform us into being like God. Thank you for that powerful, transforming word of God this morning. Thank you. And God knows we are living in some perilous times. Some difficult times, some crazy times, times like we've never seen on the clock before. And you wonder from day to day, what's going to happen next? Craziness in the church, out of the church, in the world, over the world, around the world. Craziness. But one thing that we can have and be assured of God is not sleep God has not lost any of his power and God has not given away or lost any of his love for us so today again thank you brother Brian for a wonderful powerful anointed word of God and let us continue now to pray for the preacher because as he forestated
was upon his bed of affliction. But God lifted him from his bed of affliction so that he could speak a mighty word unto us. God bless you. This time we want to thank you for what you have already done by way of offerings. You have given faithfully, diligently. And so we thank you. But today if your heart desires to give toward this ministry here at Bethel, Pensacola, 511 Woodland Drive, 32503, and you will see it on the screen. See the various prompts and various ways that we, you can give. We appreciate it. We thank you for your giving in advance. And I thank God for how he's blessing this church through your giving, through your prayers, through your faithfulness. And I know that God is going to continue to bless us and bless you and you and you and you. Many of you who give, we don't know you by name. But I come to tell you today, God knows you. And he's going to diligently reward you for your faithfulness in your giving. So thank you today. As you see the various prompts on the screen by ways of giving. Thank you. God bless you is my prayer. At this time, we will have doxology and the benediction. Praise God. anything to praise them about this morning. Lift up holy praise hands. Lift up the holy Lift up the Lord. Oh, yes. Praise, praise him. Praise him. Above. Praise him. All in your provisions, praise him for salvation, praise him for love, praise him for mercy, praise him for grace, praise him for kindness, praise him for love. the present now unto him that is able to keep you and you and you and me from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever Amen. 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 Amen.